Greeting subscribers. I will be talking today about red wine, the difference between the ones that you love and the ones that you don't, and why. We're going to be talking about tannins, the difference between dry, bitter tasting wine and more fruit forward, uh, light bodied wine. So we're going to be tasting a Pinot Noir today. And then we're also going to be tasting the Cabernet Sauvignon. And I'll be talking about the difference between the two of them and how you can find your favorite red wine, no matter which type you love, dry or sweet. So if you want to know more, stick around. This is the Tiny Tasting Room. Alright people, so I am here in San Antonio, Texas right now, which is why my background looks so plain and boring. Uh, I'm in a hotel room, so I figured I'd taste something that's local to the Texas area. This is Becker Vineyards. It's called Econoclast. It is a Cabernet Sauvignon from 2018. and. It is out of Fredericksburg, Texas. The alcohol by volume is 13.6%, which is pretty high if you all drink wine. If you don't drink wine, you know that the 13% is around the highest alcohol by volume you're gonna get for a wine other than a port. Uh, port wines are usually um, mixed with some kind of bourbon or brandy, so it ups the percentage to about 19, 20%. And we'll be going over port wines in a separate video uh, because I love those too. A little bit about Cabernet Sauvignons, they're usually the more t high tannin. Uh, and tannin is basically that compound in wine that is mostly in the skins of the grapes, the stems of the grapes, the leaves of the grapes. And if you don't know anything about wine making, uh, red wines tend to have all of those in when mixing the wines and um, basically mashing them up into a juice. So all of the stems and all of the leaves and everything is just dumped into a big container and it's crushed together. So you do get that tannin out of those stems, out of those leaves, out of the skins of the grape. Whereas wines are, white wines on the other hand, are skinned. Um, they only have like the juice from them so they don't have any of that tannin. So that's why there's a huge difference between red wine and white wine. So uh, in terms of Cabernet Sauvignon, we're gonna get back to that. It has more tannin because it's usually aged in some kind of wood barrel. And wood also has tannin. So it ups the tannin value and makes it more dry. So when I talk about tannins, just picture that dry kind of cotton mouthy feeling you get when you drink a red wine. That's why they call it dry versus light bodied. So usually if a wine is aged in barrels, wooden barrels, it has a little bit more tannin. If it's aged in stainless steel barrels or containers, then it's not gonna have that extra tannin with it. So just keep that in mind when you reach for a Cabernet Sauvignon, you're gonna get one of those higher tannin wines that's more dry. So if you want to avoid that, just don't go for the Cabernet Sauvignon. If you want to try it, you can try a Cabernet Sauvignon from one of your brands that you know and love, like barefoot that has awards for almost every wine because they're a little less I don't know I don't know what to say about barefoot wine I don't buy it so uh, but this here is a local wine that we're going to be tasting today and when you taste red wine what you want to do is keep it at room temperature so you don't refrigerate red wines unless it explicitly says it on the label and it's more of a sweet fruit forward red wine. This is not sweet, 
it's dry, it needs to be room temperature. Now, when you pour it, I mean, you just pour it like any other wine, right? But when you stop pouring, in order to reduce spillage, you rotate the bottle and go upward so you can reserve that extra little drop. Every drop counts, okay? So when you hold your wine, when it's a red wine that's already room temperature, you can either hold it by the glass or hold it by the stem. The reason that you see people holding it by the stem is if it's a white wine and it's cool or refrigerated, holding on to it with your hands is going to obviously make it warmer faster. So that's why you see people holding the stem. Now what you want to do is aerate the wine by swirling it in your glass. Okay, Aerating it just means that it's getting a little oxygen, it's stuck in this container for a while until you pop the cork and then you stick the cork back in it so it's not getting oxygen. That kind of gives it a little bit more surface area, the swirl, to expose it to the oxygen in the air. And when you swirl it, you can kind of sniff and you can get all of the grape and all of the fruit that's in there. It's gonna smell really good. It's grapes, it's fruit. After you sniff it, you can take a sip. Now, notice how I kind of let it sit in my mouth for a little bit before swallowing. Some people do the full like slushing it all around your mouth. I don't do that, but in order to let the wine wash over your taste buds, you're going to have to let it either sit in your mouth for a little bit or literally actively slush it around like people do. So you swirl, you sniff, you sip, you either slush or you wait for it to wash over the palate so you can get all of the bitter tastes, all of the fruit tastes, a little bit of that vanilla that comes from aged in those, uh, being aged in those barrels, depending on whether it's a bourbon barrel or an oak barrel, usually it's oak, and that's where you get that kind of vanilla note uh, with it. I love Cabernet Sauvignon. It sits on the palate. To me, it's nice and fruity, but to other people, it doesn't <laughs> taste fruity, and that's fine. It's just your preference. But if you want to try it, I encourage you, absolutely give it a try. You can purchase one of the smaller. You don't have to purchase a bottle like this. They tend to sell smaller bottles, and even smaller than this one. Uh, this one is a 375 milliliter bottle. Whereas obviously this is your 750 milliliter bottle. So you can get small bottles or you can go to a vineyard and taste their wines and they'll only give you like this much. <laughs> okay, that is the Cabernet Sauvignon. All right, people, I've rinsed out my glass and I'm ready for the Pinot Noir. I've never had these wines, so this is the first time I'm having it. It's a, basically a review. The Cabernet Sauvignon from Becker Vineyards is a good wine. However, caveat, this Econoclast wine is not sold anymore. It's not even made by the vineyard anymore. They do still make Cabernet Sauvignon and they have some reserve versions of it but they do not make the econoclast i don't know what the difference is between this one and the other ones they're currently making but if you're in texas and you want to try this wine i encourage you to look it up online i think their website is beckervineyards.com and you can kind of see for yourself which ones they have and try to go to their vineyard and actually taste them some Cabernet Sauvignons are better than others. Like I said, when it comes to your more mainstream wines like Barefoot, um, 
hot, dark horse I think it is maybe what's another really popular one I'm not sure there's so many popular ones out there that's in every single store that you always see I try to avoid those because they're mass producing them it's not like the small vineyards that are not as out there uh, and they kind of have more of a hands-on approach to producing their wines rather than the mass production of a huge company so I'm so, not dogging these brands if you like them let me know I'll do a review on them if you want to let me know what your favorite wine is maybe you'll see it on the next video all right let's get into the Pinot Noir Pinot Noir is a red wine that is drier it's more dry than the really sweet wines out there however it is more light bodied of the red wine varieties that are high tannin so like your Cabernet Sauvignon I'll be tasting others later on in other episodes like Bordeaux, uh, Merlots and things like that but Pinot Noir is actually considered one of the lower tannin red wines out there it's a little bit more light bodied this one in particular the label reads Building on our decades of expertise in crafting Pinot Noir, this wine offers an expression of the best places to grow this beautiful grape in California. Notes of dark cherry, raspberry, and lavender integrate the notes of cinnamon and vanilla for a distinctively layered wine. A silky smooth mouthful and a long lingering finish offer a memorable taste of fine Pinot Noir from J Vineyards and Winery. Uh, this is a 2017 Pinot Noir. They got 51% of their grapes from Monterey County, 26% of their grapes from Santa Barbara, and 23% from Sonoma. This is a 14.2% alcohol by volume Pinot Noir. I got it in a little tiny cute bottle, and yeah. <laughs> That's how I usually pick my wines in the store. I go and see which ones kind of stand out at me and then I grab it. <laughs> I love all kinds of wines so you'll probably see anything from super sweet to super dry here. Whites, reds, rosés, I drink it all. I'm a heavy wine drinker and, and connoisseur, uh, not an alcoholic type, but I do enjoy one glass of wine with dinner multiple times during the week not every day during the week because I'm in my master's degree course I also have a full-time job so it doesn't work out every night for dinner but I do really enjoy wines all right so let's get into this Pinot Noir this is a twist top so that's pretty cool if you don't carry around um, corkscrews like I do I kind of carry them with me wherever I go so that I'm never without one, but you know, wine drinkers out there. I poured a little bit more in here than the Cabernet Sauvignon, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so like I said before, this is a room temperature red wine. You swirl to aerate it, smell it. It smells completely, utterly different than the Cabernet Sauvignon. The Cabernet Sauvignon gave me more warm, vanilla, deep, rich smells. This is more of a light, light, fruity smell, but not too light and fruity, like some of your juice wines, as I like to call them. You give it a swirl in your mouth to make sure it touches all of your taste buds. And it has that lingering flavor. It has a little bit more pucker factor than the Cabernet Sauvignon because it's more acidic. It's more fruity, therefore it has a little bit more acid than those dry wines do. This has obviously some raspberry and some cherry so you're gonna get a little bit more acidic
there's a little bit more bite but not in a bad way so this is more easy to drink if you are afraid to venture out and go full-on Cabernet Sauvignon start with the Pinot Noir if you want to explore more dry wines go for the Pinot Noir first just find a Pinot Noir in a store it doesn't matter what what brand just grab one if you want to grab a small one just to taste it you can if you want to go to a vineyard to taste it if they have Pinot Noir you can do that uh, a lot of wines in the store are going to be manufactured in California. It's it's wine country out there. So there's they grow a lot of these normal grapes that you see, like your Pinot Noirs, like your Merlot grapes, like your Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. Um, on the white side, like your Sauvignon Blancs, your Pinot Grigios. A lot of those grapes are grown in California. That's just the, the climate that they grow in and they thrive in that. It's nice when you can see a local wine, like whenever I go somewhere new or that I'm not used to, I try and find the local wines. So you can do that by going to any wine store any alcohol store like an ABC Liquors, a Total Wine and More, um, if you have a World Market, even, I wouldn't say your Walmarts, I would say your local kind of mom and pop wine and liquor store. But your Publix, your Walmart, may have local wines may not it just depends i know i'm from florida and the Publix in florida offers local wines they don't have many so you're gonna have to like really look for them but i wouldn't go to walmart to find a local wine you're probably not gonna find it unless you're in california <laughs> again you really get that that raspberry and that's where I think the the acidity is coming in that little like flavor I guess that is more of a sound than the flavor but you get me like that that tart that's the word I'm looking for tart raspberry is tart you get a lot of that heart raspberry that raspberry cherry okay if you don't like raspberries or cherries you might not like a pinot noir and we'll we will find you a good wine to drink i promise you so please stick around like the video subscribe to my channel I will be going over so many more wines and I promise you if you are trying to venture into the wine game you will find something that you like through this channel I promise you that so stick around for next episode episode two will be on the white wine side of this I'll, I'll be tasting a Chardonnay <laughs> and a Pinot Grigio two red wines kind of like the Cabernet Sauvignon and the Pinot Noir on the white wine side. Chardonnays are a little bit more dry and your 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 Pinot Grigios are a little bit more fruit forward light bodied so I'll be comparing those on the white wine side next week. At that is the end of my episode episode one so if you're here for episode one you're a real supporter and i thank you so much for tuning in there will be so many more videos to come please like and subscribe and i will see you next time on the tiny tasting room